ClickHouse has no pivot operator, but we can achieve similar behavior using aggregate function combinators. It sounds a bit complicated, but hopefully this video will persuade you that it's not too bad. So from the documentation, we're interested in the map suffix. So this will create an aggregate function that takes a map as an argument and then aggregates the values of each map key separately using the specified aggregate function. Let's launch ClickHouse and have a look how it works. So we're going to call some map and then that's going to take in a map and we're going to have a key ClickHouse, a value of one, and then a key of ClickBench and a value of two. And if we call that, you see we get back a map, ClickBench two, ClickHouse one. So, so far, not, not that interesting. Let's try something a bit more complicated. So this time we're going to create a CTE and it's going to simulate returning two rows. So our first row is going to have a map with ClickHouse three, our second row is going to be click bench two and click house four. And then we'll call sum map again. And this time we get the sum of the values for each key. So click bench is two and click house is seven. We could change that and say, I want to get the max map. So that's going to get the maximum value for each key. So in this case, click bench two, click house four. Or we could do the average, which is click bench two, click house 3.5. Let's now have a look at how this works on a bit of a bigger data set. So I'm going to connect to the new ClickHouse SQL Playground, uh, which you can also find at sql.clickhouse.com. And we're going to query the UK price paid table, which has properties sold in the UK. And you can see it comes back. We've got a price, we've got dates, postcodes, type of the property, street, locality, town, and so on. Okay, so we're going to start by creating a CTE called prices by decade, where we compute the decade in which the property was sold, and then we get all the other fields. And then we're going to do like a kind of like pivot on year. So we're going to say select county, then median map, we'll put in our map, the year is going to be the key, and then the price, and we'll call that median prices, selecting from prices by decade, grouping by all, and ordering by the max price. And you can see it comes back, so we've got the county, for example, Greater London, and then each of the decades is in there. So we've got 1990, 2000, 2010, and then 2020. Noticing the price goes up quite substantially by the time we get to the 2020 decade. If we want to filter it, we can, just using a where clause. So we could say, hey, I only want to get years greater than or equal to 2010. And then you get back just those two kind of two keys in under medium prices. We could change that to say, I want to add in the max map as well as the median map. So now we're going to get the maximum prices. And you can see there it comes back. So that people buy properties for a lot of money uh, in the UK is what you learn from this. We can also change that to have the average price instead. Now averages tend to have a lot of decimal places, so it will kind of mess up the, the visualization of this. So what we're going to do is we're going to call map apply afterwards. That takes in the key and the value, and then return, we need to return the key and the value, but we're also going to floor the value. So we just get the round that down. And then you can see it comes back. So now we've got the medians and the averages for 2010 and 2020 for 10 of the counties. We can group by multiple columns. So let's add in district alongside county. We'll delete the average computation and then we'll order it by the median price instead. And so you see now we come back and you can see it is absolutely dominated by Greater London when it comes to the median price. We can also pivot on multiple columns. So we're going to delete up to the select. This time we're going to group by the year and then we're going to have our median map. We'll have the map. And then this time it's going to be the postcode one then a space and then postcode two and then we'll have the price and then we'll again from prices by decade and we're going to filter it just down to one postcode so NP1 otherwise this takes up way too much space and you can see it then comes back the years are now the rows and you can see the postcodes are now uh, inside the map inside median prices so if you want to learn more about aggregate function combinators check out this video next